so again, making certain that we have this saved at this stage, uh, and looking back at our drawing, we're left now with the upside down L, or the, um, we'll just call it the L shape. There's not a lot in the way of foundation geometry and dependent geometry relationships here either. Uh, this is mostly neutral geometry if you ignore that fillet radius uh, there. Uh, and we're going to draw this as a fillet and we'll draw this as a chamfer. Uh, we could use this circle here as foundation geometry for these two vertical lines even though we have you know x values for them. Uh, we could gain a couple of connections um, there easily. So to do it that way, it would look like this. I would draw a circle defined by radius and center point. The center point is going to be halfway between 2.5 and 3, halfway between that line and that line. So that's 2 and 3 quarter and at y minus 2 and a half. So x 2.75, y minus 2.5, z0, and a radius of a quarter of an inch because it's a half inch across uh, that leg of the L. Then we could draw lines, tangent to a circle at an angle, select that circle, give it an angle of 90 degrees, and we want both of these lines. And that does give us a couple of connections here uh, automatically. But from this point, we've got to draw the rest of our geometry manually. That's three more lines. We've got to draw this line here, a vertical line at x5, and then a horizontal line at y minus a quarter, and another one at y minus three quarters. So if we draw those line, I'm just going to use the axis line function again. Vertical line at x5, shift enter, switch to horizontal, minus a quarter, minus three quarter. All right, that gives me all the geometry that I need, excepting the, uh, fill, uh, the fillet and the chamfer, which we'll do later. And now we just need to connect it up. So let's go, uh, let's use the contour trace. Uh, so select start point line or circle. Now I'm adding geometry to this partial shape here. So I'm going to start with this point and then just walk around the geometry to the next point. So there to there to there to there to there ending at this point. And yes, delete the construction geometry. That gives me this. I can select that corner and do it a half inch fillet, select that corner, and do a half inch chamfer. Now the chamfers, you have three different buttons that you can select for chamfering, depending on how your chamfer is dimensioned. Uh, for the most part in the United States, you're going to run into this option here, where the dimension you're giving represents the length of the leg of that chamfer, from the hypothetical corner to where the chamfer runs out. So from this point, to where the chamfer runs out. Uh, this one, this option is the depth of the chamfer. So it's measuring from this point perpendicular to the chamfer line, uh, whatever dimension you're given. So this is actually going to create a deeper chamfer using the same dimension than this choice would. And then the third choice is the length of the chamfer itself from here to here. Uh, and this will actually give you a shorter chamfer using the same dimension than either of these two. But in this case, this is the number we need. We need a half inch from this point to where the chamfer runs out. And that gives us that. So that would be freeform geometry. Uh, geometry expert is fairly uh, straightforward as well. I always start with a vertical line because that's the way that it comes open. So let's start here at x5, and then I'm just going to walk around it this way. So x5, then y minus 3 quarter, and then um, x3, and then I need a clockwise circle with a quarter inch radius at x2.75, y minus 2.5. And then instead of a 180 degree line, I need a 90 degree line coming off of there. And that is at two and a half inches. And then I've got a horizontal line at minus a quarter. And I can close the shape out. I can come back in and put in my fillet radius. And my chamfer. Now, I forgot to show you one thing. 
and geometry expert. Uh, this line here originally said 90 degrees before I closed Geometry Expert. When I closed it, it corrected it to 270 because it's going from here down this way uh, as far as the order of the elements of geometry in the list here. So that line's trajectory is 270 degrees, so it corrected that. Um, now, if I had uh, wanted to make this an easily editable shape, uh, I needed to have not defined it quite so stringently. Uh, if I were to change this circle to a half inch, for example, the lines don't go with the circle because they're not defined by the circle. This line is defined as being at X3 and that line is defined as being at X2.5. So if I had wanted those lines to go wherever that circle goes, I should have left this number out and left this number out. That means that these lines now are defined by that circle. Wherever that circle goes, those lines will go with it. So, uh, not a big deal. It was very easy to fix after the fact. But uh, just so you know that putting a little thought into how you define a shape in Geometry Expert can make it very easy to edit uh, after the fact. It's very handy for family of parts. Uh, or something that you know is likely to change. Um, so kind of keep that in mind. All right, uh, let's do one more. Uh, actually, let's do two more. Uh, so sketching with the mouse. The problem with sketching with the mouse with this shape is I can't draw this circle with, with, uh, with the mouse. I can't draw, you know, all I can do is draw lines sketching. Uh, but all of these dimensions, all the corners that I need to hit are quarter inch increments, so I can sketch most of this very easily. And the nice thing is sketching works really well with Geometry Expert. So I can come over to X5, I'm just reading my X and Y value here, coming over to X5, Y minus a quarter and clicking. We'll come down a half and we'll come over to three inches. And then here, just to make a point, most people would come down to the center line of the circle or to the tangency of the circle. But just to make a point, I'm going to chop this off really short like this. But if you think about this, all five of these lines are in the correct location. The only thing that's wrong is that this should be a circle down here. So if I open Geometry Expert, load this back in, select that element, and say, no, you really should be a clockwise circle with a quarter inch radius at x2.75, y minus 2.5. And, and it'll correct it for me. And then... Fillet radius and chamfer. Now there's one more useful tool and I don't know that I would ever actually use it on this but this is a good chance for me to show you how it works. Um, there's a tool in Gibbs that allows you to manipulate shapes, multiple shapes, turn them into one shape or uh, they, they actually act like Booleans do with solid models. If you've done solid modeling, uh, Boolean functions uh, allow you to add solids together or subtract one body from another uh, or find the intersection of multiple bodies. We can do the same thing with geometry. So if you see a shape and you kind of see um, shapes within that shape, so to speak, for instance, I'll look at this and ignoring that chamfer, I see a rectangle here and I see a rectangle here, and then a circle here. Uh, if I were to draw those, let me get rid of this. So if I were to just go to my box function and say that I need a box that is, this side is at two and a half, that side's at five, so two and a half inches in the X, and from minus a quarter to minus two and a half, so two and a quarter in the Y. So if I say box two and a half inches in the X, two and a quarter in the Y, with a corner at X two and a half, Y minus a quarter, and draw that box. And then I'm just gonna shift this one over, plus a half, and this one down a half, minus a half, and draw that box. And then go back and draw the circle. And it's already set up. Then with these shapes, I can go to my shape button, 
Go to Combine Shapes, and here are my Booleans, Union or Addition, Subtraction, and Intersection. So in subtracting, the order that I select things in matters. Uh, with Union and Intersection, it doesn't. So whichever shape I select first is my primary shape, and whatever I select after that is going to be, uh, are going to be secondary shapes. So if I select this first and then that and do a subtraction, any space that this shape shares with my primary shape is going to be removed from my primary shape. So that's going to give me this area right in here, like that. Okay. If I select this first and then this and do a subtraction, I'm going to be left with this area. And then I can just select this and add that to that, and I get that. So, again, you know, the combined shapes, I probably would not use it here. It's not going to be the fastest way to get this because of having to figure out how big the boxes are and where they're at. Uh, but there are, you know, there are times when you look at a shape and you can see uh, component shapes, if you will. Uh, another situation where that's really handy. Uh, is maybe coming in after the fact and adding a, a thread relief groove to a lathe part. Uh, just to kind of give you an example here, let's just let's put a point uh, halfway along this here, and then let's go create a box that is a quarter inch by a quarter inch, and I'm just going to center the box at this location. So with my cursor in there, Shift Alt click on that and say do it. So if I had that, I could go into my shapes and combine shapes, and I could take this minus that to get that. Or I could take this shape plus that to get that. So uh, it, it's, a, it's a good tool for, for making certain types of modifications to a shape. Uh, and, and with some parts, uh, for instance, if I jump over to here, uh, it's pretty easy to see that this shape largely consists of four rectangles. Uh, that would be a pretty easy shape to draw using that, that strategy. All right, another strategy that I could have taken with combined shapes is to look at this rectangle and then this rectangle and then that circle and just added all three of those shapes together would have got me to the same place, essentially using the same tools. All right, so that is a uh, that presents a number of options for ways of drawing this shape. Uh, next, make make sure that uh, as you go through this, uh, at some point when the part is complete, when it looks like this, make sure you save it. Uh, next, I'm going to go through the entire part just picking one method because uh, we kind of took a lot of time on this, but I wanted to introduce you to as many of the tools as possible for creating geometry. And then we're going to apply a number of these on the remaining parts. Uh, we won't do much of anything else multiple ways. We're just going to draw them. Uh, but we'll be drawing upon the, what we learned uh, on this part.